I don't have no trouble wondering if my God is real. I don't have no trouble wondering if he's right. I don't have no trouble wondering if he's got everything under control. I don't have no one no trouble wondering is my God God. I believe that he is more than I can believe that I am a human being. He's so so real to me. He's so real. I've had the Lord sometimes speak to me, tell me things so precise that it happened exactly like that. And I just shake, I just shake all over. And I say, God, you're scaring me. You're scaring me. You're too real. I, I can't understand for the sake of me why people don't get serious. Why? And God wants us to be serious because he says, I know that works that thou neither hot nor cold. Talking about a love affair. He said, I'd rather have you hot or I'd rather have you cold, but you are lukewarm because you're lukewarm. I'll vomit, I'll spit you out. I don't want nothing to do with you. What do you do with that eternal salvation, people? What do you do with that? Once saved, always saved? My Bible says God's the author of eternal salvation unto all them who obey him. That's free. Yes, amen. So say amen to that. Amen. Whew, my God. Verse 9, chapter 7, verse 9, 9 and 10. When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you. Now Pharaoh even says to Moses, I want to see a miracle. He's already seen all these signs and wonders. Now he wants to see a miracle. How many know what a miracle is? An extraordinary event taken as a sign of the supernatural power of God. He already seen it. But he wants to see another one. See, the Pharisees, that seems when they come to Jesus, they said, show us a miracle. Show us a sign. He said, you're going to see no, see no sign except the sign of Jonah. Even as Jonah was in the belly of the well, in hell, three days and three nights, so the Son of God will be likewise. He said, you'll see it. I'm going to die, and I'll go to hell. But I'm coming back up again, just like Jonah. Yeah. I am so, so amazed. I've seen every type of a Sign, wonder, miracle, all, all kinds of things. And yet I know that my God does them. And yet I, when I see them, I stand there and I go, ah. it still amazes me. Brother John, it still amazes me. It still amazes me. Pastor Tim, it still amazes me. Sister Pam, I'm still amazed. Still amazed. I don't think there's a night that goes by I don't lay in bed and meditate on the greatness of God. Just like last night, just thinking about the word, in the beginning, God created the heavens earth. In the beginning. In the beginning. He is the beginning. He's the alpha and of the beginning. Who can, can explain God? How great, how awesome is our God. And then to turn around and think that that same God, before the foundation of the world, I foreknew, before he made the heavens, the earth, the whole universe, he foreknew you and I. <coughs> and predestined us to be conformed, become the image of his son Jesus. It's so amazing that he made you and I of all the creation and said, now, I give you a choice. Who do you want to serve? And our life is but a vapor that appears for a little time and vanishes away. You think of vapor, steam. You, you watch steam come off a tea kettle or a whatever. You, you can't go one, two, and it, it disappears. Smoke, you can blow out and watch it a couple seconds. But our life, if we live for a billion years, vapor, go on. Who wants to do your thing for burn hell 
That's not too much common sense. But God says, for those that says, I don't believe, I love them so much that I'm going to have to prove to them that I am real. And I'm going to use somebody. I'm going to use John. I'm going to use Linda. I'm going to use so-and-so. I'm going to use Dita. I'm going to use... I'm going to use my people with signs and wonders and miracles to prove to them to make them believers so they don't have to go to hell. I love you, Jesus. Well, then go do some signs and wonders and miracles and prove to this world that I'm God. How can a man say you love God and hate a brother? You don't care. He said, you're a liar. The truth ain't in you. My name is Jimmy Jimmy. I gotta be busy, busy, busy doing my thing. Verse 9 and when Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh. And before he serpent, and became a, became a serpent. How many of you know he said, I want to use you? But you've got to do it the way I told you to do it. This is why, maybe God has never dealt with somebody else like that, but many times people come up for a prayer, and they'll, they'll line up across wherever, and the Lord will speak to me, so-and-so is going to stand right there, with the foot right there and right there. They can't be two inches over. They've got to be standing there right there. Somebody said, that's stupid. It might seem stupid to you, but it's not to God. And what happened years ago, I get people to stand there, and the power of God do whatever he's going to do there. And then I got to a point where well, they don't really have to stand there, and I let people stand close to it, and nothing happened. How many of you know if God said, you stand exactly right there? Where are you supposed to stand? Exactly right there. And if God says, cast your rod down, he didn't say, wave it in the air. Somebody say amen. How many of you know, whatsoever he saith to you, do it. Close to it? No, do it exactly like he said. I've had God speak to me in different services about an offering. And he'd say, give X amount of dollars. It wasn't millions or something, but you know, give X amount of dollars. And a pastor would pass the plate again and say, we need more money. And it come to me, because my wife leaned over to me, and she said, God told me such and such. I said, yes, man, that's exactly what he told me. And we passed the plate right by. Pastor looked back at us. He said, we still need more money. We're going to take the offering the third time. He looked back and said, Brother Humphrey, he said, I seen you pass that plate by the second time there. He said, I appreciate it if you put something in. I said, no, I'm not going to. What? I said, I'm not going to. God told me and my wife exactly a certain amount, and that's all we're putting in. So we say, man, yeah. I want to give him one more sense. Why? Because God didn't tell me to give him another penny. If God tells you to give one dollar, give one dollar. If he tells you don't do nothing, don't do nothing. Anybody still here? Amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obeying. Obeying exactly what he says. Anybody understand? Amen. This is why God wants to use people in signs and wonders and miracles. And God's going to start speaking to... I, I feel annoying with God on this. God's going to start speaking to different people. And even out there on television land. I want you to do such and such. So a sign of wonder and miracle can happen to that person so they can believe that I am God. And he's going to put you to a test. And he's going to tell you how and what to do, and you've got to do it. I remember one of the first times God ever spoke to me. I finally got saved. Got filled with the Holy Ghost. Man, I was in love with Jesus. My sister will probably remember this. I was so in love with Jesus. Boy, I, mean, I was just, oh. We go to church on Sunday morning. The church is packed with all these Funny Sunday morning people. Some of you know what I'm talking about here in television land. You only come for your morning micro quickie to your little show. 
And the Lord spoke to me that morning, and I've never forget the word. She said, Son, do you love me? And that just made my bad rooster want to crow. Son, do you love me? I said, Yeah, Lord, I love you. Just like Peter. Yeah, Lord, I love you. He said, If you love me. Oh, he said, Do anything for me? I said, Anything, Lord. See, sometimes we think we will. The Lord said, If you love me, get up right now and go stand in your head in the middle of the aisle. My wife, my sister, and different ones was there. I just came back in 1979. I went, what? The Lord said, if you really love me, get up right now and go stand in the head of the aisle. Guess what? I didn't do it. I thought, I can't do that. People look at me and all this and that. I, I, there's no way I can do something like that. My heart was pump, pump, pump. Some of you know what I'm talking about. God's speaking to you. Why don't you do something? Your heart's going boom, 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 boom. <sighs> Surf sober. I went home. I felt so bad. Went back Sunday night. Uh, my lip was hanging clean down on the floor. Come Wednesday, I went to church. My lip was hanging down. I thought, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Come Sunday morning, I'm, my lip's still hanging down. And the Lord speaks to me. He said, son, you love me? I went, yeah, Lord. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? He said, do anything for me? I thought, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> yeah, Lord. Then go and stand on your head in the middle of the aisle right now. Guess what? I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't do it. How many of you know when you're disobedient to God, you feel bad? You feel bad. You know, you know you're being disobedient, and you feel bad because His presence is way off. I'll draw nigh to you if you draw nigh to me, but if you forsake me, I'll forsake you. You know what I'm talking about. Come Sunday night, I went to church, and man, my lip isn't laying between my on the floor, it's dragging behind me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come Wednesday I went to church and I mean it was dragging 10 feet behind me. I'm really dying and out. Really paying a price for being disobedient to God. I tried to pray. How many of you know when you're disobedient your prayers don't even work? Your prayers are about as lifeless as can be. You know what I'm talking about. Come Sunday morning, I walked in that church, and I mean, I, I thought God will never speak to me again. Never, 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 never will He speak to me again. I felt it. It's over. You know what I'm talking about? Service is almost over. And this time, the church was packed beyond packed. I mean, it was packed to the walls. And all of a sudden, the Lord speaks, and He said, Son, do you love me? Boy, it didn't take me long to. And I started crying. I said, yes, Lord, I love you. He said, do anything for me? I said, anything. How many of you know I was sick and tired of being sick and tired? <laughs> he said, and get up right now and go stand on your head in the middle of the aisle. I started to get up, and then I remembered, well, I, I got to let the pastor know what's going on. The pastor was really sharp dressed, and his nice black wavy hair and everything, you know, he was dignified, classy. I'm a little hillbilly boy, you know. <clears throat> I raised my hand. And this pastor, all he talked about every service was an offering, an offering. He loved talking about money. Okay, who'll give this? Would you raise your hand and so forth? So while he's preaching, I wave my hand. And I know what he thought. Brother Humphrey wants to give an offering. He said, Brother Humphrey, you have something you want to say? And my old heart would be <laughs> my knees were, I mean, I was almost pressing, I all shook up. I, and I was stuttering. I said, God told me I'm supposed to do something. He looked back, I still see him. He said, Brother Humphrey, if God told you to do something, be obedient to God. <laughs> I knew you thought I was going to say, said, God told me to get $50 or $100 or something, you know. I said, uh, God told me I'm supposed to stand on my head in the middle of the aisle. 
He said, what? I said, God told me I'll post a stand on my head and there they are. And I stood up and he said, Brother, bro, brother Humphrey, Brother Humphrey, that's okay, that's okay. He said, you don't have to do that. I said, no, he told me I'll post and do it. He said, that's okay, that's okay, brother. And I started to walk. I walked up along the side and walked out in the middle. And I thought, oh, my God, help me. I haven't stood on my head since I was a little boy. Oh, my Lord, here I am, almost 40 years old. What am I going to do? So I get down, and I try to stand on my head. And I kicked my legs, and my feet came up maybe six, eight inches off the floor. I thought, oh, my, this is embarrassing. <laughs> I gave another kick, and my feet didn't hardly go anyplace else. And I said to Lord Jesus, help me. My God, help me. My God, help me. I gave a kick, and it's, it's true. It's God is my judge. It's like somebody grabbed me by my feet and stood me straight up in the air. And I mean, I was standing like an iris, just straight up in the air. And all of a sudden, the power of God hit me and knocked me to the floor, and I'm laying on the floor vibrating. man jumped up and ran out of the church. He said, that man looked like he's been electrocuted. He said, I want your porch of that. And so I say, hallelujah. But how many know God will test you? He'll tell you, now you get up and go pray for that person. You do this, you do that. I want to use a sign and wonder and miracle. Someone say hallelujah. Come on. He don't want you just going. And how, how many of you know, it's not always in the church. <coughs> I mean, I'm constantly just, it used to be I'd walk through people and say, can I pray for you? I said, I'm going to pray for you. Give me your hand. I'll pray for you. So, somebody say amen. amen. He's going to use you. Let, let me close here with these last couple verses here. <coughs> Oh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's go to our next verse here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's go to Exodus chapter 9, verse 14, 15, and 16. God speaking, For I will at this time send my plagues upon th thine heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people. Now listen, please listen to me. That thou mayest know that there is none like unto me in all the earth, what did he just say? <coughs> For at this time I will send all my plagues upon thine heart and upon thy service and upon thy people that thou mayest know that there is none like me on all the earth. For I will stretch out my hand and I will smite thee and all thy people with pestilence and, and th 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 thou shalt be cut off out of, the earth, out of the earth. Verse 16, And very deep for this cause have I raised thee up to show thee my power and my name to be declared throughout all the earth. Do you take notice what he said? Mm -hmm. He wants his name to be declared among all the earth. <sighs> Would everybody look up here, please? <laughs> when the world sees you coming, you know what they ought to see? A holy man or woman of God with signs and wonders and miracles. They ought to, when they see you coming, fear ought to strike the unbelievers. Reverence should come upon their lives. When somebody says something or does something that's not right, you ought to have enough anointing that you don't even have to say anything. They'll say, uh, I'm sorry. I'll say, don't, don't say you're sorry to me. Say you're sorry to him. Mm -hmm. How many of you know we need to stand up with the power and authority? Mm -hmm. Somebody say amen. amen. Not too long ago, I won't go in full detail, but three people like for the SWAT team came to my farm. And they had a job to do. And they was all in their black uniform and their assault rifles and all this and that. And the head man started to curse. I said, there won't be none of that. He said, I'm sorry, Reverend. Don't say you're sorry to me, say you're sorry to him. Let him to the Lord. He said, I've been on the team for 35 years and I've never experienced anything like this in my life. Took him by the hand. God spoke things that was going on in his life. Another black brother on the assault team come walking in and wanted to see what happened to his leader. He walked in my office, led him to the Lord. 
How many of you know you have power over all the works of the devil? Yeah, that's right. He said, I never thought I'd ever experience something like this in my life. He said, 35 years, he said, I've never seen anything like this. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Somebody say amen. amen. We've got to close. Hallelujah. Chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. And the Lord said, Mo, said unto Moses, Go into Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and his servants, that I might show these my signs before him. Verse 2. And that thou might tell in the ears of thy sons and thy sons' sons what things I have wrought in Egypt and my signs which I have done among them, that ye may know how and that I am the Lord. How many times have we seen that? Over and over and over, he says about the signs and wonders and miracles, that they might know that I am the Lord. Do you believe God changed? How many of you believe that was Old Testament God changed? Anybody believe the Word of God where he says, I am the Lord thy God, I change not? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever? Amen. The same God then is the same God now, and he still wants us to move in signs and wonders and miracles. Well, Brother Humphrey, what... What if signs, wonders, and miracles don't happen in my life? <clears throat> what should I do? I can tell you what you should do. Get signs, wonders, and miracles to operate in your life. Well, how, Brother Humphrey? Become a believer. Well, how do I become a believer? Do what he said. If you're not laying an egg, so I say amen. That got a few smiles. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. One of the best things for you to do if you're not laying eggs is eat a lot of laying mash and you'll lay eggs. How many of you know if you really want to start laying some eggs or signs of wonders, let's start getting in with Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Boy, it's getting hot in here now. Somebody turn that heat down. Hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> uh, verse 14, we only got a couple verses here. Verse 14, verse 4. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow thee, follow after thee, and I will get honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians might know that I am the Lord, the God that did so. How many of you see that one more time? That the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord God that did so. Let, let's jump down to uh, verse 17 and 18, or chapter 14 now, verse 17 and 18. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, that they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon his host, upon the chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have got me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon his chariots, and upon all his horsemen. How many times do we see this? The signs of wonders and miracles. He's, in every case, he says, that I'll get me honor. That they might know that I am the Lord, the God. Is there any doubt in my mind? Uh, verse 24, chapter 14, verse 24. And it came to pass that in the mornings, watch, the Lord looked upon the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and the cloud that troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off the chariot's wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against Egypt. <clears throat> see again there. Now they recognize it. It's God fighting for, uh, for Israel. Last verse. Verse 31. Now listen. And Israel saw the great work. How many of the Bible says that every man should be judged according to his works. And that's signs, wonders, miracles, or whatever. And Israel saw the great works that the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Did you hear that? Yes. I better read that one more time. And Israel saw the great works that the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. How many of you know that you ought to have such a reputation that people have such <coughs> faith in who you are that if you say something, they can believe you? If you come up and you 
pray for somebody or say something or whatever, they'll say, you know, I know Greg. That's a holy man of God. He won't lie. If he said this or said that, it's done. You don't even have to sign a contract. They believe the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the Bible says in the last verse, and they believed his servant Moses. 